Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know what time it is where you are, but certainly we are glad that you joined us. This is August the 22nd. We are doing lesson number 12, and it's based on 1 John, 4th chapter, the 2nd through the 3rd verse. Then it skips over to the 13th through the 17th verse. Then we go to 1 John, um, the 5th chapter, the 4th through the 5th verse. So our lesson for this morning is more than a feeling. More than a feeling. So we're going to pray. I hope you've been wearing your mask, creating some social, social distance, and uh, washing your hands, sanitizing your hands. And you know what Miss Gina likes to say, just plain old staying away from folks. So let us pray and we'll get started. God, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you for this day in which you've made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we bless you for all the things you do, for all the things you have done. God, we ask that you would just touch us, touch this lesson, touch our ears, touch our hearing. God, cause us to be able to live beyond what we feel. God, cause us to learn beyond a feeling. God, cause us to know beyond a feeling. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. More than a feeling. All right, let's read our What's It All About. Hey, Maya, Miss Andrews called out to her daughter. Pick up the phone. It's your grandma. Maya rushed to the phone, anxious to get her grandma's critique on the cookies she'd sent her. Hey, Granny. Hi, baby, her grandma responded. I just wanted to thank you so much for those cookies. They were baked to perfection. You're welcome. It's your recipe, said Maya. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing just fine, Granny replied. I won't complain. Truth was, she had battled with cancer about five years ago, yet won. Now she was still recovering from a second stroke. Even so, Granny was not a complainer. Instead, she always kept a praise to God on her lips. The Lord is my keeper. That's from, my, that's from Psalm 121, she boldly proclaimed. I love you, Granny, said Maya. I know you do. I could taste your love in those cookies. Promise me you'll keep baking and also keep your prayers and your faith up for me. All right, Maya. Yes, Granny, said Maya. When the call ended, Maya didn't hesitate to release the tears she had struggled to restrain during her, during her chat with Granny. Miss Andrews embraced her daughter to comfort her. How can Granny stay so positive through all her suffering, Maya whined, whined, wiping her eyes. Well, your grandma's faith is fueled her from her assurance of God's love for her. But how can she feel God's love through the pain? Maya didn't get it. Honey, I'm not saying I, don't, I understand everything, but I can almost hear her telling us, God's love is more than a feeling. It's a fact. Yes, sir. Have you accepted the fact that God loves you no matter what? How has the insurance, the assurance uh, or lack of it affected your faith during difficult times? More than a feeling. So listen, Maya wanted to know how can her grandma Feel the love of God 
even through pain. So let me ask you something. If you are sick or you're hurting or something going wrong, do you still know that your parents love you? Do you still know that they take care of you? You even know that when you're sick, when things aren't going good in your life, your parents still feed you, they still clothe you, they come in there, they bring you some soup, some medicine, they take care of you. Your grandmother does that, whoever is your guardian does that for you. Hey, even if you're feeling bad, you still know that those who love you still love you. And that's how her grandmother could feel the love of God and know that God was still taking care of her even when she was going through something. Learning from God, God's love can't be measured merely by our senses. It goes beyond what we can see, feel, or even fully comprehend. Our lesson defines how a true believer has realized and received the love of God revealed through his son. This revelation of his love for, uh, for and in us empowers us to live an overcoming life. First John, fourth chapter, second through the third verse. Then the 13th chapter through the 13th verse through the 17th verse. Then the fifth chapter, fourth through the fifth verse. NIV version. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Even every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming. And even now is already in the world. This is how we know we live in him and he is in us. He has given us his spirit and we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them and they in God. Verse 16 says, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have the confidence on the day of judgment in this world. We are like Jesus. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is, who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. When we believe, acknowledge, or confess that Jesus is God, God's Son, we can live with the insurance that He and His love abides in us and we can abide in Him. Also, through our confession of faith, Jesus, in, in our, our confession and faith in Jesus as our Savior, we can be confident that we are overcomers in the world, regardless of what's going on around us. Regardless of what's going on around us. So this is our lesson and it goes across John, 1 John, the fourth chapter, and then we end up in John, the fifth chapter. And so it starts off by saying, this is how we recognize the spirit of God. Well, that is kind of incomplete statement. If you go back to the verse before that, it says, try the spirit by the Spirit and see if it is of God. And then it goes on to say, this is how you can recognize the Spirit 
of God. Try the spirit by the spirit and see if it be of God. That means that we can think something is of God. We can hear something that sounds familiar, but we have to try the spirit by the spirit and see if it is of God. There are a lot of things out there that sound right, that may feel right, but it is not right. You have to use your spiritual side, that side of you that you know is there, that part of you that nudges you and says, "Uh -uh uh-uh-uh, this is not right. You can feel that even when it seems that something may be right on the outside or may be right because it says it's right, but something in your heart, something in your spirit always knows that is not right. And this is our first lesson. It says, try the spirit by the spirit and see if it is from God. So they did not include that in our scripture, but I want you to make sure that you go back and whatever lesson that we have, no matter what they print, you can go back and read the chapter in its entirety so that you know what it's talking about. Because if you just stop and say, this is how we recognize the spirit of God, it's really an incomplete statement. You need that try the spirit by the spirit and see if it is of God. Then it goes on to explain that every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come from in the flesh and is from God, that is that is the right spirit. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is from God. This spirit is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. So the spirit of Antichrist existed even back then. And we know even now that there are lots of things out there that says Jesus did not exist. Um, He was not God's son. He was a prophet. And we know there's a lot of information out there. That's why the Bible said to try the spirit by the spirit and see if it be from God. We know that there are lots of influences. I could be one of your influences, but it does not matter. You have to try the spirit by the spirit and see if it is from God. That is the only way to know if it is the Antichrist or if they are for God. And we have seen and testify that the father has sent his son to be a savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love of God for us. God is love. God is love. God is love. So first we got to try the spirit and see if it is of God. And then we have to rely on God's love. So you try the spirit and then you rely on God's love. That means you lean on God's love. You lean on what God says. You lean and rely on the love of God, because God is love. Whosoever lives in love lives in God and among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment in this world. We are like Jesus. So if you try the spirit, 
rely on God's love, you can be confident that in God's judgment, you will be like Jesus. Because what? God is love. So can you hate and love at the same time? Mm, no, it's hard to do. You either love or you hate. It's either sweet or it's sour. It's either hot or cold. If you're lukewarm right there in the middle, God said he will spit you out. Verse, um, um, chapter five, verse four says, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the ones who believe in Jesus is that he is the son of God. So you have to try the spirit by the spirit and see if it be of God. Then you have to rely on God's love. And then lastly, you have to overcome the world. So what do we do? We try, rely, and then we overcome. That is a great way to go in this world. You try the spirit, you rely on God's love, and then you overcome. And overcoming brings you victory. Overcoming brings you um, uh, um a victory that is overcoming the world. There are a lot of things that happen in this world. There are a lot of things that happen at school. There are a lot of things that you will see. But if you would try, rely, you will be able to overcome. And how do you overcome? You follow what God has taught you. He said to try the spirit by the spirit. So if your friend is teaching you something that is not of God, you try the spirit by the spirit and you see mm, that's not right. Then you know you can move on in love. You rely on your love. Tell them, hey, we can't do that. And you go on. And know that you have overcome what he or she is trying to influence you to do. That might not be right. That might be worldly. They may be trying to tell you to smoke, to drink, to steal. That is not of God. That is of the world. So you'll be able to overcome the world and the temptations of the world if you do what? If you try, rely, then you will be able to overcome. So let's say it together. You try the spirit by the spirit, rely on God's love for you. Then you will be able to overcome. Try, rely, then overcome. Try rely, then overcome. So I hope this message has helped you on this morning. I hope you will take that with you, that you'll try, rely, and then overcome. Continue to wash your hands, wear your mask, try to stay away from people, and you're going to be all right. Try, rely, and you'll be able to overcome. I hope you have a blessed day and I will see you again for our last lesson in August next week. Mwah.